you know, I would probably want to make an offer like in the low twos and see if I can land somewhere down there. Does that make yeah, sense? It does make sense. One of the biggest challenges with working with agents on distressed properties is getting the agent to make your cash offer to the seller, especially if that offer is significantly lower than the list price. Now, I'm Jerry Norton. I'm known as the Agent Whisperer. And not only can I almost always convince the agent to make my low offer, but I actually get them to agree with me on my offer price and then go to bat for me to persuade the seller to accept my offer. So on this video, I'm gonna show you my exact process to convince the agent to make my low cash offer. And I'm not just gonna tell you how I do it, but I'm gonna show you using a live call with an agent so you can see it in action. Now, if you're new here, like I said, I'm Jerry Norton. I make millions of dollars a year wholesaling and flipping houses. And here on my YouTube channel, I show you how to do the same. So if you wanna be a flipping genius like me and live your dream life, subscribe to my channel and watch my videos. Now in a minute, we're gonna to cut to the call and I start out by telling the agent that I'm calling about their listing on 123 Main Street and that I'm an investor and I'm interested in making a cash offer. Now after that, step one is to ask the agent to give you insight into what is going on with the property and why the seller wants to sell. Take a listen. Hi Donna, it's Jerry Norton. I'm calling about your brand new listing on Bridge Cove. Yeah. I'm an investor. This looks like it might be something right up my alley. Okay. There's no pictures. What's uh what's going on here with this one? Yeah. Yeah. So it is a divorce. Okay. And there are a lot of kids, and that's why the interior has not been photo ready. So as my listing stated, it is um, in need of a lot of TLC, mainly okay. cosmetic. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. When you say a lot of kids, how many is a lot of kids? Because I know a lot of kids. I have 10 kids. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, then you can relate. Yeah. Same, same mom, same dad, no twins. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's a lot. So yeah, so she has eight kids living there now. Okay, that's easy. A total of 14. 14? In this little house. Mom, there were 14. No, no way. No, no, By the time they grew, like she said, like, you know, by oh. the time they started leaving. So she's never had more than 10 kids in the house. But she's wow. an eight right now. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Bless her soul. Yeah. So, So yeah. it's it's a little so beat up. I did take some, yeah. I did take some interior pictures today. Okay. Because you know, they, they finally vacated for, you know, cleaned it up and vacated for showing. So I did um, get an interior picture or two. And I also took a picture of the backyard, uh -huh. um, which I didn't have before either. So, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it, the roof is nine years old. The husband was a licensed electrician. So, you know, that is in good repair. There was uh, a plumbing leak situation in 2009 that they um, filed a claim and mm -hmm. repaired. Okay. There was um, a mold discovery in between the wall between the kitchen and the living room and they had that remediated and have a certificate of completion but that wall was never finished again. Now notice I had a little fun. I was lighthearted and I joked about having so many kids but the reason for asking about the property is less about finding out what's going on and more about getting the agent to talk. The more the agent talks, the more they let their guard down and the more they feel seen and heard and valued, which builds trust. Okay, step two is to establish the cost of repairs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the condition of the property and what needs fixed up and how much it might cost. The goal here is to get the agent to understand and agree with me on the cost of repairs. Take a listen. So if I flip it, right, and I go in there and I fix up everything, what do you think that budget would be? You know, I am a terrible guesser at that. Okay. I really am. Cosmetically is what you're looking at. Like, you're definitely going to have to replace the door, the interior door. And, and cabinets, countertops, floors, paint, like all that? So she put in new countertops last year. And then they have new cabinets underneath, but they were never painted. Okay. Okay. And yeah, they put in new wood floors in parts. 
a couple, maybe eight years ago. So, you know, your floors are mismatched in there, finishing the wall, interior doors need to be replaced, the kitchen needs to be, you know, painted for sure, um, you know, and fixed in that sense. But yeah. as far as, and, and your um, appliances may need, you know, if you were flipping it, you may want to change out the appliances. But, so that's feeling um, to me, I, I do this quite a bit, that's feeling to me like probably 40, 50K will get all that done. Okay. I'm like, yeah. okay, that seems a lot, but I don't know, yeah. It just all adds up. So we talked about some of the different things that needed fixed up and notice how I asked her what she thought the rehab cost would be. Again, the reason why I'm asking her opinion is to help her feel like I value her opinion, which builds trust, and at the same time, I'm building a case for my low cash offer, which you'll see in a minute, so keep watching. Step three is to establish the after repair value or what I often refer to as the back end value or resale value. Now my goal is to get the agent to be on the same page with me about what I'll be able to resell it for once it's fixed up. Take a listen. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. I'm looking at one comp in that neighborhood. I don't yeah. know if you saw this on Glendine. Yeah. And that got 360. So there's one on the market right now on Bridge Coast um, Circle uh, Drive. Uh huh. Well. Three doors down. That's yeah. For 389. How long has that been sitting there though? I oh, I see it. 45 days. I see it. Yeah. And it's a yeah. bricker. I saw this. Yeah. This looks nice too. It looks, I mean, it's, it's not totally updated, but it's pretty clean. Yeah. Yeah, I saw this My one. My understanding is that that's been a perpetual rental, but I don't know that for sure. Yeah, it's got that feel to it. Hold on, I want to look at the days on market on this. This got listed on August 27th, and they haven't touched the price. So it's been sitting here for a few months at that price. They haven't done any reductions. Hmm. It's not moving fast yeah. for, for a vacant clean. Right. Now, this comp got right. 360 that's sold. So yeah. you, you got a 389 not selling, and then you got a 360 that sold. And that's really it if you stay right in that circular neighborhood there. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to yeah. get my head around value and repairs. And yeah. Now, just like in step two about the rehab, I asked the agent her opinion on the value and noticed she wanted to use an active comp for sale that was not selling to establish a higher value. Did you see how I helped her understand that that wasn't an accurate comp and we needed to use the sold comp right on the same street? Now, by the way, step two about the rehab cost and step three about the value can be reversed. It doesn't have to be in that order. Now, once I built a case for the ARV and repairs using logic, I'm gonna help the agent see how I come to my offer price. But before I give the offer, I wanna make sure I use the double dip technique where I offer to let the agent represent me on the buyer side. That means they get the listing commission and the buyer's commission. Take a listen. One thing I was gonna tell you too is I'm unrepresented. Are you able to write the offer for the buyer side? Can you represent me on the buyer side? Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And I can cover your, your buyer side commission if that's easier for everybody. Okay. You could tell her this is this is an investor. They're all cash, and they're, they'll cover me on the buyer side. So all you got to worry about is your three percent listing side, and it's better for you because it sort of avoids any conflict of interest because they're not they're not paying it. I'm paying it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I asked if she could represent me, she knew exactly what I was talking about and was more than happy to double dip the deal. Now, I hope you're getting a ton of value from this video and my five-step process to get agents to make your offers. I actually outlined the entire process with exact word-for-word -word scripts and if-then sequences so that you know what to say and how to respond to different objections. Now, I call this five-step process the agent manipulation model because if you follow it with precision, it works so well that you literally brainwash the agent into making your cash offers for you. Now, this guide is maybe millions of dollars and I'll give it to you for free. To get the free download, just go to agentofferscripts.com. Okay, finally, step five is to make the low cash offer. Now, the way I like to do that is I like to help the agent understand that in addition to the cost of rehab, I have closing costs, I have commissions, I have financing, and I wanna make a profit, and all of that has to be factored into the deal. I wanna show the agent and help them understand that my offer is logical and fair, 
even if it's way under the list price. Take a listen. What I typically like to do is like a verbal and then see if the seller is interested. If they are, we could follow up with write in writing. That way we're not wasting sure. everybody's time. But yeah. I am quite a bit under where it's listed. So I know it's brand new. Help me get a feel. Are they looking to move this quick? Are you wanting to wait around a while to see what happens or where are you at? They, uh, yeah, she, she definitely, she has a place that she's moving into at the end of the month. So the sooner this gets closed, the better. So then she'll still have a payment? Is that, that's where that would be painful? Yes. And she needs the proceeds from the house, you know, to live. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. I mean, we could definitely make that happen and I would be cash as is. We would probably just put a little inspection time on there to get a walkthrough done, but yeah. it's only to make sure there's not something scary like a foundation or something. I mean, I, I'm going to need to be down there, though, is the problem from where they're at. If I'm going to, because in my mind, I'll come, I'll have to buy it, spend, let's say, 40, put it back up at, and try to sell it at 360 and cover closing costs, commissions, financing costs, yeah. and then make a profit, right? I can give you a, like a ballpark idea where I would need to be. You could run that by them and see if they're interested in that fast, convenient cash offer. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Let me know what you Okay, so let me just think about this for a second here while I got you on here. So what I try to do is I try to be all in for around 75% of the resale value. I'm just going to share, share with you my math so it makes sense to you. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. So if I take 360 as the resale and I take 75% of that, that gets me at 270. But that's my all in number. And the reason why, because that gives me room for commissions, closing fees, financing, and some profit. Right. right. So then okay. if I'm if I'm all in at 270, then I got to back out 40 on a buy that puts me around 230. So then, you know, I would probably want to make an offer like in the low twos and see if I can land somewhere down there. Does that make yeah. sense? It does make sense. I don't know that she can go that low. But let's and do this. Let's let's start with just seeing if she she wants to entertain cash offer. And it would be, again, make sure she understands, look, this number is factoring in all the repairs. So I'm not going to come back and say, oh, well, it needs their hand railings loose. You know, none of that. There's no inspection. There's no appraisal, no financing, no showing. You could really take it off the market if she agrees. Right. And just all I would want is a couple days to send someone through there to just get my head around it. As long as that checks out, nothing weird's going on. Then we close in 30 days. Okay. But okay. I need to be down there in the low twos. Okay. And I can find okay. if she if she'll entertain low twos, then I can get that exact number to you. I'll 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 spend a little you know a few minutes penciling that out. But there's no sense if she's not even in the ballpark. I think. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And it's gonna take me running some numbers for her too to know what that looks like. I hear you. Okay. Well, I will definitely talk to her at least through this evening to really get in touch with her. Great. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll keep my phone on. If I don't answer, just shoot me a text and I'll call you right back. Okay. Sounds great. Awesome. Thanks, Donna. Thanks. Appreciate Bye. you. Bye. Now notice I actually explained my buy formula. I just want to get a range of around where I need to be. The reason it doesn't need to be very accurate is because at this point, we just need to feel out the seller to find out how motivated they are to sell this property. I reiterated the benefits of my cash offer and I got the agent to agree to present my verbal offer. Now, if the seller comes back anywhere remotely close to my ballpark offer, then I know the seller is serious and I can do a deep dive on the numbers and I can go back with an concrete, accurate offer and try to lock up the deal. But the big takeaway from this video here is that the agent was not just not offended at my offer, which was significantly lower than the list price, but she was fully on board and excited to present my offer to the seller. Now, if you think that's brilliant, leave a comment and say, Jerry, thank you for sharing your ninja tactics. You are a flipping genius. And also leave a comment and let me know your biggest takeaway from this video. And don't forget to download my five-step guide to brainwash agents into making your offers. Just go to agentofferscripts.com to get that free download. And if you want to work directly with me to learn how to build a six-figure business and then go on to scale to a seven-figure business, wholesaling and flipping real estate, go to fasttrackwithjerry.com for more details. And I'll see you on the next video.